what's good youtube welcome back to the channel in today's video we'll be going over how i created this turntable animation in blender 3d not only will i be going over the turntable animation but i'll also be going over how i model the turntable device as you can see right here but we do not stop there we'll also be taking a look on how to add textures to your models to give it that realism and in addition to that i'll teach you guys over how to use the cloth modifier to get this nice cloth draping effect with that being said guys let's hop into the video all right so now that we have our model imported let's go ahead and make the table that it's going to sit on now to add a mesh all you want to do is shift a and we're going to go down and we're going to select cylinder there we go Hit three on your number pad to go into this view. Now we're probably going to want to make this a little bit bigger for our model to actually sit on. Now keep in mind, it doesn't have to go all the way to the top. So now that we have our table, which was extremely simple, let's go ahead and make our turntable, which we're going to use with the cylinders also. So shift A, I'm going to take that cylinder and bring it all the way up to the sitting down. Then you want to hit S to scale it down on the Z axis and move our model over it just a little bit. Now that we have the base, let's go ahead and add a couple modifiers to our shape. Now, once you add the subdivision surface, you can see that it does something like this, but this is a very quick fix. What you want to do is go into edit mode, go to line mode, and you want to click the top with the loop select, alt and click. All right, so now once you got the top and bottom selected, let's go ahead and go to our item properties. Now you want to turn on the bevel and you want to turn on the mean crease that will make it sharp but not too sharp let's go ahead and make this a, just a little bit taller like that there you go and just bring it down a little bit we're gonna do a loop cut one and then a little menu pops up right here you want to click that menu and you want to hit two now we want to go to face mode and we're gonna alt click now once we loop select if you go to your right side you will see extrude we don't want a regular extrude we want to extrude along normals now once you do that we're just gonna bring this in all right so go ahead and right click and shade auto smooth now we also want to make a little bit in the front now if you ever put a subdivision modifier and you see that you cannot see your faces clearly that's a quick fix all you gotta do is hit this button over here before we extrude anything, let's go ahead and make one more loop cut through the middle. Now we want to select these four faces right here and inset them. And then we want to extrude it out. Extrude it once and then extrude it again. Then we want to inset it one more time. All right, so now that we made the top piece, this is the piece that will be spinning around. Now let's go ahead and make the bottom piece. So the bottom piece is very easy. All we're going to do is hit Shift D. That's going to duplicate the bottom face. And then we want to hit P, separate by selection. And then go back to object mode. And then we're going to click that piece that we just made. We're going to just bring it down just a little bit go right there. Now we're going to go back into edit mode and we're going to extrude this down. So now you should have something that looks like this. Yo. All right. So with the turntable complete, let's go ahead and add some further details. So we're going to right click and we're going to use a regular plane. Now let's go to top view, which is seven on the number pad and we're going to just move this over so we can see what we're doing so what we want to do is we want to break this into a triangle so go ahead into edit mode and we're going to go ahead and click vertex and we're going to select these top two right click and hit merge vertices at center now we have these triangles now what we're going to do since this is a very very sharp let's go ahead and bevel out these so hit shift Control b now when this menu pops up it might pop up like this go ahead and click it and now you want to add four segments so let's go ahead and add a ray modifier. There we go. Just move it over just a little bit. Just add 10. Now we're going to add another array modifier, but we don't want to affect the X. We want to affect the Y. There we go. And then we want to offset a little bit. There we go. And then let's just go add a couple more. All right, let's go ahead and collapse our modifiers down. So once we have both modifiers, let's go ahead and scale this all the way down and see how it will fit it okay let's go ahead and add a little bit more so now that we have our triangle pattern what we need to do is use a boolean to cut it out so we can place it directly on our turntable so we're selecting the bottom piece we're gonna shift d to duplicate it scale it all the way down till it's covering so let's just put 20 more right here all right so now that we have both cylinder and triangles in place in order to hit that boolean before we move on to that let's go ahead and add some thickness to this triangle so what you're going to do you're going to select the triangles and you're going to go to add modifier and search for a solidify 
modifier there you go so you want to give it a thickness of about 0 0.02 there you go or we can make that a little bit less thick so once the thickness is set we're ready to make this cutout of the cylinder so with your triangles already selected go ahead and shift click the cylinder and then you want to go to this little tab right here and where it says edit you want to hit intersect bull to intersect all right so now that we have our circle complete let's go ahead and apply all all right so now that it's applied let's go ahead and delete this null and now you should have a perfect circle with your cutout now right, you want to go to top down view now we just want to move our circle till it's perfectly aligned with our turntable there we go let's move it up a little bit so once that's in place let's go ahead and also bring it all the way up so you can see that everything is gray so it's a little hard to see where this piece actually is so let's go ahead and turn on random and what this does is randomly shades each individual item all right so let's bring this all the way up till we see it popping out a little bit and then we could just scale it just a little there you go make sure it's not floating now before we move on let's go ahead and set up a couple of lights so shift a go to lights and we're going to use an aerial light we're going to have one up top and shift to the side you're going to rotate that there you go you're going to shift d again and you're going to rotate that once again now we want to bring these two lights down just a little bit right there all right let's see how this looks so let's go ahead and bring the strength ups on all of these lights let's do it for it let's do about a thousand to start it off with there you go thousand thousand in the setup that we're using we're using psycho experimental and also we have the noise turned on but if we scroll all the way down we're using agx and a very high contrast so this is just all white right now so let's go ahead and add some textures to our turntable so let's go to the shading now for the textures it's going to be very very simple which is going to add a noise so click on the turntable and you're going to go to new and you're going to label this material turn table now we want the base color to be black right there and we're also going to add this to the triangles and also the bottom piece of the turntable so you can search up turntable all right so now we just want to add a couple imperfections and a couple details to our turntable so that's very easy so what we're going to do is we're going to add a noise texture there we go we're going to plug the noise texture into the base color so we can see exactly what we're doing now we want to add a color ramp in between so we can adjust the values okay so let's make this bigger there we go so we can see what's going on so once you got that set up let's go ahead and add a bump node so what the bump node is going to do is add some height to our texture so depending on how much detail you want you can mess with the detail you can mess with the roughness and the distortion just to add that subtlety and we're also going to add this into the roughness map there you go just a nice little subtle detail now before we move on we actually need to add this little light cube right here so click on your turntable and go to edit mode what you're going to do you're going to select all four front faces right here and you're going to go to hit this plus icon and you're going to hit new material we're going to call this turntable light turntable light there we go so all we want to do with this one is turn up the emission so once that all set go ahead and hit the sign and you should have a different face right here there you go all right so now that we have our turntable complete with material let's go ahead and make our light octagons let's go back to solid mode so we can see what we're doing now for the light box is very simple we're going to be using a cylinder and we want to take the vertices down to eight if you don't see this panel is probably hidden like this so just click it like that eight should be good there we go so you want to bring that up let's bring it all the way to the side so we can work on it independently all right so once you have your cylinder let's go ahead and rotate this there we go we're going to rotate this 90 degrees so let's select these points but you have to be in x-ray mode so you can select all of the sides just like that and then all you want to do is just scale it all the way down and what i did it was also add another loop cut and scale it up just just a little bit and scale this one up there you go so once you got the base shape let's go ahead and add the back piece to it so what you want to do is you want to scale this down and set with i and then you want to just scale it out all right so once you got that back piece and this is already selected so let's go ahead and bevel these out just a little bit there you go with three segments you want to bevel these edges also hitting control b not too much and with the scroll wheel you can add more segments if you want there you go control b so after beveling let's go ahead and shade auto smooth now we're going to add the same material that we added to the turntables so let's go search up turntable let's go ahead and add an acri so let's go back to the shading tab you want to go to world and then you want to hit new now with your background selected 
hit control T and you should have something that pops up like this. If you do not have any HDRIs, go ahead and sign up for my Patreon. It's free and I'll be dropping the HDR that I'm using in this video on my Patreon. So we're going to go ahead and select old hall 4K HDR. Now we're cooking with something. So let's go back to layout. Now once we're on layout and we see this, let's move our light box a little closer. So one thing that we need to do is inset this face and extrude it in just a little bit. And then let's add that emissive texture. So same thing we did with the turntable, hit the plus sign. And we're gonna go to turntable light and we're gonna hit a sign. All right, so now that we got our texture set up on our light box, we actually need to make the stand, which is very simple. It would just be a cylinder. So let's go ahead and make that cylinder. Let's bring it over here and scale it all the way up. There you go. All right, and then add that same material that we're using for the turntable. So now that we got our light box and everything set up, everything looking good, let's go ahead and angle this light box down. And then we're just gonna duplicate this over, rotate it 180 degrees. And then we're gonna have a third one directly behind it. So shift D and rotate it 90. So now that we have our lights, we have our turntables, we have everything set up and complete how we want it. Let's go ahead and work on this table and the cloth. So let's select our turntable and our shoes, and we're just gonna hide it for right now. Don't forget that. And you wanna select plane. We're gonna bring our plane all the way up. And you wanna scale it. Now, once you have a good size plane, let's go to edit mode, and we're gonna subdivide it by 30. There we go. Let's add a subdivision modifier. Then let's go head over to cloth. Now I like to use a silk preset and then turn this quality steps up to 12. There you go, everything looks good. Now you should be able to just hit simulate, get out of edit mode. Oh, whoa, there's one thing that we forgot to do and that is make this a collision object. Now, once you simulate, hold on. Okay, so let's go ahead and simulate this. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. Let's see how this looks. Okay, everything looks decent, shade smooth. And now if you want, you can increase the subdivision count and re-simulate it again. Now it will go a little bit slower, but you will get a finer detail. So now once you get your drapes looking how you want it, let's go ahead and add another subdivision to smooth out the results. And there you go. Now let's go ahead and hit apply all. So now you should have something that looks like this. Now let's go ahead and add some materials to this. All right, so new, and we're gonna call this cloth. Cloth M for material, go back to object. We're gonna use two types of textures and then mix them all together. So one of the textures that we're going to use is a magic texture. Now what I always do when I'm compiling these shaders, I always plug it in into the color so I can see what I'm doing and always add a color ramp. There you go. Now you wanna make this four, depth of four, bring the scale all the way down. Make that a little bit darker. So now we need to add a bump node to give it some height. Go ahead and plug in that bump. So we're gonna bring our specular down and also we wanna disconnect this and we wanna make this black. Okay, there we go. Now you could stop here. It already looks good and everything, but we wanna add just a little bit more detail to this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a noise texture right there. Let's just plug it into the base so we can see what we're doing. Duplicate this color ramp. Okay, let's disconnect that. And we're gonna bring this, we're gonna bring these closer together. Something like this. Take down the roughness. There you go. So you get something that looks like this. So what we need to do is mix these two nodes. So by hitting control, shift and drag using the node Wrangler add-on. If you don't have the add-on activated, go to the edit preference and activate it in the add-ons. So once you've got the mix, let's go ahead and see what we're doing right here. We're going, we want this mix node to be driving our roughness. Okay, let's deselect that. So if we look at it now, it's a little too reflective for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this value up. There you go. Sometimes it's really just experimenting with your look. Now, instead of plugging this mix node into the roughness, let's go ahead and add it into the roughness of the sheen. So now that we have our black material, Let's go ahead and unhide our objects. So with our scene complete, let's go ahead and add our camera. So search up camera. With our camera selected, let's go ahead into camera view. We actually wanna control the camera, so go to view, and we're gonna select camera to view. So what that does is now you can control your camera. So we're gonna select our shoe. I'm gonna put it somewhere that looks good. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So Blender default comes in 50 millimeter. Let's just go ahead and make it 100. 
There we go. And what we want to do is add some depth of field and select our object. There we go. And center that. Then we want to turn off locked camera view. Depending on how much depth of field you want, let's go ahead and turn that down to about 1 to 1.5. Control B so we can only see. Okay. So we can move. Yeah. Something like that. And then let's make this, let's go ahead and drop the f-stop down just a little bit more and then zoom in. There we go. So now that we have our scene set up, let's go ahead and work on the animation. Now for our animation, we're going to be using a empty to drive the 360 spin. So let's go ahead and add that empty. But before we do that, oh, go ahead and add this cube. That's good. So what you want to do now, since we have our empty, you want to select everything except the bottom because we want the bottom to stay still. And then we want to select the empty again, hit control P, object keep transformed. So now the empty is driving. Oh, we missed one thing. So let's go ahead and parent that. Control P, object keep transform. There we go. So now if we just hit rotate on the Z axis, you should see that it's spinning like this. Okay. All right, so now that we have that part set up, let's go ahead and add a keyframe on the Z rotation, insert keyframe. And then we want to skip to the end. We want 300 frames because we're rendering this out 30 frames per second. And we want this animation to be 10 seconds. So 30 times 10 is 300. And then you just want to 360 plus insert keyframe. And you should get something that looks like this. But we want it in a very consistent pace. So what we're going to do is select these two keyframes. Right click it in interpolation mode. We're going to go to linear. So now it's nice and smooth. Let's go to camera view. There we go. Now we worked so hard to create this nice drape and we're barely seeing it. So let's just move this down just a little bit right there and angle, angle, angle the camera up. Come, we have to show the people how hard we worked on this cloth. So once you've got that all set up, don't be afraid to play around with different angles to see if you find something that you like. Like this one looks good. You can do a little top down, you know, to show that cloth that you just made. So one last trick I'm going to share with you guys is how I improve my lighting. So one thing when I'm lighting, what I like to do is I like to take all my lights and put it into a collection. All right, so new collection, let's call it lights. And I just like to shut this off to see exactly what I'm working with. Okay, so as you can see, it looks good because the emissive textures are driving the lights, but I don't necessarily want that too much. So let's go to this and just drop the down. Okay, because I want mostly my lights to be driving it. So then I like to turn on my lights and I like to go one by one. Just shut them all off one by one and just see how it looks. Go back to the beginning. Okay, that one's okay. Okay, this one. I want it to be a little bit sharper and a little bit more powerful. There you go. And then the top one down, let's go ahead and shrink this down and bring it closer and want to drop it. All right. So let's shut this off again. So with the lights, let's go one by one. Okay. So that's the top down. Let's, let's give it a little bit more. There we go. All right. So once we got our lighting dialed in, now we can bring the strength of the emission textures a little bit up just to add that ambiance. So this is the final product of our turntable animation. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the video. If you like this video, go ahead and comment in the comment section below what you liked about this video and what you learned. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. All right, you guys have a blessed year.